Well, nanocrystal, the, the word itself uh, says that it is a piece of solid uh, which is reduced to the size of a few nanometers, but it's a crystal, meaning that uh, the atomic arrangement in this piece of solid is regular as in a, in a bulk crystal. Um, it, also, it is also customary to think, at least in the uh, chemistry community, of a nanocrystal as an object comprised of this uh, crystalline core and the shell of stabilizing ligands, uh, which are bound to the surface of the nanocrystal. A nanoparticle, on the other hand, it's something uh, more general. Uh, it can be, uh, let's say, a nanometric object, uh, which is not necessarily uh, composed of uh, atoms that are uh, uh, arranged in an ordered fashion. For example, it can be just a, a, a nanoparticle of a polymer or of an amorphous material. So in that case, uh, we refer to the more general term, but in, in my view, a, nano, a nanocrystal, it's something uh, uh, well-defined, as I've explained before. Okay. I mean, crystalline properties uh, sometimes arise when you just have a, a few cells uh, together. Um, when, when you take a crystal, uh, even if it is of a nanometer size, you still have a lot of the uh, periodic uh, um, functionalities and properties of a bulk crystal. But of course, because there is the surface, uh, these properties are uh, strongly modified. And that is also what makes these materials very interesting. Uh, there are different effects that make a nanocrystal transformative. First of all, uh, the ratio of surface to uh, inner atoms is tremendously high. It's much higher than in a regular crystal. So that makes a nanocrystal extremely reactive. Uh, then there is the fact that the nanocrystals are just small. So any transformation which involves, for example, the in diffusion or out diffusion of chemical species is very, very fast compared to bulk crystals because these chemical species uh, needs to travel only a few unit cell uh, to uh, enter uh, or exit the crystal. And of course, there is the surface. Uh, once you change the surface passivation, you are completely modifying the overall property of the, of the nanocrystal, and you are ex essentially transforming it in, into a completely different object. Well, certainly applications, uh, for example, in energy storage or in energy conversion, where uh, intercalation, the intercalation of species or reactions of species on the surface of nanocrystal, which can modify the nanocrystal itself, are uh, extremely exciting. But also the fact that a transformation in a nanocrystal can completely change its behavior from, for example, insulating to semiconducting or from semiconducting to uh, metallic uh, can find applications in, in many, many uh, different fields. Uh, the nanocrystal, um, by changing completely, radically its properties in a matter sometimes of a fraction of a second, can be used uh, as a sensing element, for example. On the other hand, the nanocrystal itself can be thought as a, as a gigantic chemical precursor to prepare yet another nanocrystal um, only when um, a given stimulus is given to the crystal, for example, heat or change in pH or interaction with the uh, ionic species in solution. So one can invent, envisage also uh, several different applications in sensing in general. Well, my lab right now is working on uh, uh, metal halide nanocrystals and uh, especially on uh, uh, halide uh, perovskite nanocrystals. In these materials, uh, the uh, lattice is ionic and it's extremely soft, um, which makes uh, these uh, nanocrystals particularly reactive uh, and transformative. Um, so while this can be uh, deleterious for a wide range of applications, because on one side we did uh, stable uh, materials to perform a, a given task, 
um, they are also a very interesting testing ground uh, for actually studying these transformations in the nanoscale and trying to uh, understand what are the underlying mechanisms of these transformations. So if I am allowed to say, um, these uh, specific type of materials are sort of toys that have been given in the hands of, of chemists with the knowledge acquired in the last 30 years in terms of what are nanocrystals, what happens in them, and what kind of techniques can be used to study them. Now we have this tremendous array of tools, and now we have these uh, uh, nanocrystals that you can easily uh, modify at your wish. And so this combination is generating a lot of uh, very exciting and interesting science. It is going in many different directions. It, it is going, uh, especially in the case of nanocrystals, um, in the direction of displays, because these materials have, uh, uh, some of them have uh, um, excellent uh, uh, light emission properties, so they can emit light with a high efficiency and also with a um, very narrow bandwidth, so very pure color, for example. But that is just one of the many other possible applications. Now, perovskite nanocrystals have been also studied in, in photocatalysis and even in electrocatalysis. So we, we don't know yet what could be um, the, you, you know, the, the total portfolios of, of applications envisaged by these materials, but it's gonna be broad. Well, first of all, we have put together uh, uh, an, an array, a terrific array of uh, uh, groups uh, from all over the world uh, working on many different aspects of uh, transformative uh, nanocrystals. From the very fundamental aspects of modeling and uh, uh, studying uh, transformation just for, for the sake of it, if I'm allowed to say, to, to many different applications uh, in energy conversion, for example, and uh, uh, in optics. So I think uh, um, because in the very essence of, of materials at the nanoscale is their high reactivity and ability to, to transform. Uh, so th this uh, um, issue will encompass all, all these uh, different aspects and I think will be um, uh, catching the attention of, of a very broad community.